relative velocity problem is more complicated than the other two. We're going to find that under most circumstances, you give them two of these three, you plug in the equation, and you just rearrange and get the answer. This one's going to be quite a bit different. Remember our equation is, whatever happens to the plane, the result of what it's doing, is made up of the plane flying in the air and the air moving relative to the ground. So let's look at the question, pick up the numbers we can, and put them in here, and then plug in our equation. A pilot wants to fly to a town 500 kilometers north 38 east. Well, the 500 kilometers is a distance. It doesn't belong anywhere in here. But the north 38 east, the plane has to end up flying in that direction after the wind is blowing. The plane is going to fly one way. The wind is going to push it. In the end, it must end up going north 38 east, or it's not going to get to that town. So the plane relative to the ground, the result, must be north 38 east. The plane is designed to fly at 170 kilometers per hour. See, normally we would give you both of these, but in this case, I'm going to give you, I'm not going to give you this, but I'm going to give you a number here. The plane flies at 170 kilometers per hour, but I don't know what direction it's flying in. I know that in the end, it's got to end up going this way. So let's look. 175 kilometers per hour, the, 170 kilometers per hour, the wind is from the west at 60 kilometers per hour. Because it says from the west, it means it's traveling east. So, uh, do I know the, the result of velocity of the plane? No, I don't. So that's an unknown. And do I know which direction the plane is heading? No, I don't. In fact, the question is, find the heading. Which direction do you point a plane if you're flying 170 kilometers per hour and you want to end up uh, flying in that direction? So the ground speed, well that's the speed of the plane relative to the ground, so we need that. And the ETA, estimated time of arrival, how long is this flight going to take? Well here are my numbers, I put them in there, let's plug them in the equation. The plane relative to the ground is equal to the plane relative to the air plus the air relative to the ground. Then normally I would say, as soon as you fill in these three, you're pretty much done. Because you just plug them in here, rearrange, it's a vector equation, you can solve a vector equation. But this one's different. I've got half of this and half of this. I'm going to have to have a different way of adding these up. And there are probably a couple of ways, but I'm going to show you the way I think would work best. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this 60 east for a second here. And I know that these two vectors add up to that one. So 60 plus 170, this plus this, is going to end up equaling that. So I drew the 60 because I know it's magnitude and direction. The 170, as soon as I draw it, I'm giving it a direction. I'm not really sure about that. But I do know the 60 plus that 170, which could be in any direction, has got to end up intersecting this line. So this plus the 170 has got to hit this line. So let's draw that line, north 38 east. There is north 38 east, and that goes with the plane relative to the ground. So I'm looking for that number. So this is north 38 east. This, well, 60 plus 170, has got to intersect that. So this is the 170 kilometers per hour, and I'm looking for that direction. So this is good. I've created a triangle. I have two sides. If I can find an angle inside, then I can use sine and cosine. So let's look at what we got. We want to solve for this length of a triangle, and we want to solve for this direction. And this direction, I need an angle, something from here or something from east. Well, if this is 38 degrees, uh, we can say that if that's 38 from north, then this angle here must be 90 minus 38, 52 degrees. I now have an angle and some sides. Let's use sine law and see if we can sort of break this apart. Sine 52 over 170. So this angle over this side is going to equal sine of some other angle over some other side. Well, I've got um, this side here, 60. So I'm looking for that angle. 
So I rearrange that, I solve for it, and I get that angle is 16 degrees. Sine of this over this side is equal to sine of this over that side. So this ends up being 16 degrees. That's great. It's getting me a little closer to figuring out this direction. Well, I know that this is 52 and this is 16. So this angle here, if all of them add up to 180, I can say that 180 minus 52 minus 16 equals 112 degrees. This angle here is 112 degrees. Remember, I'm looking for the length of this side and an angle for this. I've got the angle for the 170, so now I can figure out a direction. If this is east, then this is 170 degrees that way, 112 degrees that way. I'm going to describe it as so many degrees this way. Because you don't normally say north 112 degrees or something like that. So, if this is 112, this angle here is 68 degrees. 180 minus 112 is 68. So this is east 68 north. I now know the velocity of the plane relative to the air is 170 kilometers per hour, which I already knew. East 68 north. One of the questions was the heading. The heading is what goes with the plane relative to the air. I found it. East 68 north is the heading. Well, I've got this side, this side, I've got this angle, this angle, and this angle. It should be pretty easy to find this side here. So I'll do a similar sort of thing. Sine 52 over 170 is going to equal sine of 112 over the plane relative to the ground. Okay, sine of this over that side is equal to the sine of this over that side. So I get the plane relative to the ground is equal to 200 kilometers per hour. And that's what I was looking for, the ground speed. The last thing I've got to do is figure out the EETA, the estimated time of arrival. How long is this trip going to take? Well, we know that V equals D over T. So T equals D over V. So um, what is the distance we traveled? 500. 500 kilometers. And how, long, um, how fast were we going? Well, do we use the 60, the 170, or the 200 kilometers per hour? Well, we're traveling to a town that's 500 kilometers away. This is the actual velocity the plane is flying over the ground. So that's the one. The actual velocity, the result, goes with the resultant displacement. So I'm going to put the 200 here. So the time is equal to 2.5 hours. 